Hi, I'm Izzy. Welcome back to the Gleason First Time Buyer Podcast. We've created this podcast to help you on your home ownership journey and we'll be covering everything from interior tips to finance advice and everything in between with some amazing guests joining us along the way. You'll be able to find our podcast on all the most common streaming services, but also on our YouTube channel, which you can find by searching Gleason Homes. In today's podcast, we're joined by two lovely Gleason homeowners who are here to tell us about their home ownership journey, sharing both their amazing stories about how Gleason helped them onto the property ladder. So welcome to the podcast, Josh and Tanya. Hi. Thanks for letting <laughs> us record in your gorgeous home. Can you please introduce yourself to our listeners? Hi, I'm Josh. Uh, I'm 28. Uh, I'm a school teacher. I'm Tanya Carter. I'm 27 and I'm also a school teacher. Lovely. And what development are you both living on? Uh, living on Rainsborough Park in Nottingley. Amazing. So let's rewind a little bit because we are currently in your home, which you've got together. But if I'm right in thinking you both originally bought separately, can you tell us a little bit about your living suite? Situation. Situation. <laughs> situation. I like that. <laughs> if you could tell us a little bit about your living situation before you moved in together. Yep. So I lived at home uh, with my parents before, and then at age 24, I was looking to purchase my first property. Um, drove past Ranger Park and kind of came for a look at the show homes, um, and then bought, ended up buying a three bedroom, semi detached Fergus um, yep. for 124995 which I thought was an in, um, incredible price. That's amazing. Um, for a three bedroom, you know, semi detached with a garage as well. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, you know, got loads of support in terms of the, with the mortgage. Um, you know, the sales executive, Sharon, was amazing in terms of the step by step going through, um, you know, all the kind of processes that you've got for purchasing the home. Yep. Um, you know, yeah, so li- lived at home with parents, uh, and then, yeah, ended up buying a three bedroom, uh, semi detached home on on Rainsford Park. Did you use any buying schemes at all? So I used the government's help to buy. Um, so yeah. it was a 5% deposit uh, that meant I put down £5,900 um, and then I used the government's 20%, uh, yeah. which meant that mortgage payments, I think, were £321 a month, which you know was, was amazing really moving bad. out. It was a single single guy, first time buyer. Yeah. Uh, you know, the incentives were, were really strong um, yeah. as well. Yeah. I was living in a two-bed cork. Um, I moved up from York um and my sister lived up here uh, with her partner so that's why i ended up here uh for four thousand five hundred pounds outright cash that's <laughs> what i bought my little house for oh wow <laughs> as my deposit obviously that's good then, yeah. yeah perfect so what attracted you to buying a gleason home over any other house builders I think it was the affordability um, of Gleason Homes, uh, and also the fact that it's um, it's a blank canvas as well. Uh, when you move yeah. in, you can you can you know you can put you can put your own stamp on that one, um, and also the community feel as well. Uh, there's a real kind of nice community feel um, for Ranger Park. Yeah, uh, same. It was like I never ever ever thought I would ever be able to be a homeowner at all. Um, like in the previous video, I went into further detail about when I was 15, I was homeless, so I lived on the streets for nine months. Um, And at no point in that time did I ever think I'd be able to be a homeowner. And then, yeah, just having having a look about and seeing what there is, I think they were the cheapest by maybe £50,000 when when I came to buy mine. Um, And like Josh said, the the community feel like they they really do pull together and make sure that everybody has a great experience. I mean, you were just talking before we actually start recording, you were talking about Sharon, our yeah. lovely sales exec. Yeah, it- she's amazing, is Sharon. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. She's, she's a, definitely a credit to Gleason. I think even from the start to finish, she was amazing. Um, you know, when we bought us first home, the help to buy process to go through uh, that we use the government initiative. Yep. Um, she supported us with that one. And in terms of getting in touch with Meridian Mortgages about, you know, kind of mortgage advice, because as a 24 year old, you know, mortgage advice is not it's not something that I ever had any idea it's like around. Alien. It's yeah. no uh, idea. Sharon, Sharon is absolutely amazing and an absolute credit to Gleason. She was definitely the highlight of our buying experience yeah. in the second Aww. property. We yeah. love her. Well, I'm speaking to her in an upcoming episode, um, so I'll be sure to mention this. I'm Check sure it out. Be. Check out our beautiful <laughs> Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so what? Um, when you were both living separately, talk us through kind of your journey of meeting and then deciding to buy a home together kind of talk us through that process so i josh had bought um his house originally first and then obviously my sister lived with her partner at the time so i used to come up and see her so i got a feel for the estate anyway and then i ended up buying one um and she was adamant that i met this this boy that lived across the road from her and i was adamant i didn't want her (laughs) and then i met him (laughs) And now we have a house together. It's like a story. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we lived, um, I think we lived kind of 
between each other's houses for about about two years. Yeah. Um, and then we kind of made the decision when it was coming to um, sort of the remortgaging process that, you know, why don't we, you know, we, we, we pretty much live at each other's houses, so why don't we buy one together? Yeah. Um, and it was very lucky at the time that when we sold, um, this lovely show home had just come up for sale at the time. So it pretty much was perfect timing. Yeah. Really, I'd say yeah. for that one, it? Absolutely. And what made you decide to go with um, a new build home over potentially buying an older home and kind of doing it up and renovating i think maintenance um was, was a big one the fact that with a new build <clears throat> home you can move straight in you know again it was a blank canvas for us to comp- even though it was a show yeah. home to completely change the look and feel, feel of the house um i'd say a big one for, for us now is the energy efficiency as well i think yeah. of a new build that now is an absolute godsend to us uh, yeah. i think i think also it's um the the expense so although it might have originally been cheaper to buy like a, a house with a bit of character, shall we say, that needed a little bit of work done to it. Mm. The restoration costs that we that we um, added up would have far outweighed the the price that we paid for this house that was just ready to move into. Yeah, I also think as well the layout of the houses as well. You know, we we quite like the Gleason layouts and the way that they. The, 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 like I said, they are a blank canvas for you to put your own stamp on. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the very low maintenance, you know, working full time, being teachers, I think the ideal thing for us is having a low maintenance house uh, and, one, and one that's, you know, we can over time put a stamp on, but we can live in it quite comfortably. Yeah. When they, we are first very, move in. they are very spacious as well. Like, even yeah. when I had my two bed, um, like I I had some class parties in there with like lots of people <laughs> because you can like the amount of heads you can get in a house yeah. is unbelievable. Entertaining yeah. space is yeah. really good, yeah. Yeah. 100%. Amazing. And do you guys have any kind of like uh not so the core memories of living in your first home, either separately or when you first kind of met, or what kind of stands out about living in your first home? I think for me, the first thing was is that I didn't realise is when you buy a first home, you have to furnish it. Um, so for many, for about three months, um, I was sitting on camp chairs um, as I'd forgotten to order a sofa uh, at that point. Um, and I think it was, yeah, my first memory was actually sitting there in my living room and, and looking around and kind of thinking I've done this on my own. Yeah. Um, but I you know I do have to come back to that, you know, in that Gleason did help me with that because if the affordability wasn't there, yeah. then I, cu- I couldn't have gotten the property ladder as a single first time buyer. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think for me, it definitely was the... The, the accomplishment of sitting there in my living room thinking, you know, I've, I've actually done it myself. Um, and then, yeah, having 12 weeks of, of sitting on camp chairs. I'm just like picturing you sitting in an empty room on a camp chair. Yeah. Just like going, I've done it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I pretty much had, uh, had nothing. Just the light bulb. Yeah, I pretty much had nothing. So, yeah, absolutely. How about you? Um, for me, mine was um, having a blank canvas and being able to just make it mine. Yeah. Um, like, exactly like, I know, what we've done with this house is... Being able to move in somewhere and it being like you can just look and just picture what you want, yeah. have a play around with it because it is so like such a blank canvas. Yeah. And then being able to create how you want. Um and also some mad parties. <laughs> I had some mad because it's because I went from obviously living on the streets to then yeah. I went for a government homeless project um called Sash, and then I then got a council property myself. Um, so then moving from a, a flat to a house yeah. and then just having all that space. And actually, the more, what I was paying for my mortgage was cheaper than what I was paying on my one-bed council flat. Wow. So I took full advantage of that and then had everybody around and we all celebrated together. And that, that was probably the standout highlight was when everybody came around yeah. and we all celebrated the success together. Oh, nice. that sounds lovely. Yeah. I think what's nice as well is... is but don't have people around and it not being your parents' house. I yes. think it's a surreal yeah. feeling that yeah. when you first get the keys on that first day and you go in and you think, you know, this is mine. It's such such a strange feeling, I think, for yeah. a first time buyer. But then that also means that you have to do your own washing Absolutely. and your own cleaning it does, it does, yeah. and your own cooking. It does. <laughs> That's yeah. one of my pet hates is the washing. Not that my, pa- my parents never even did my washing when I lived at home, but I just hate it. It's one of, I hate doing the washing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't mind putting it in. <laughs> getting it out yeah and putting it out Enjoy, yeah. and then yeah. the worst part is i can get it out that i can just about put yeah. it away yeah. yeah putting it away me and my friends are having this exact conversation because they they're, not, they're probably not gonna listen to this but <laughs> they have in their spare room just piles of clothes and like yeah it's just it's such a pet hate yeah yeah yeah, it is. It's it's one of the chores sent by the devil. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. And then ironing. Who came up with ironing? I don't even own an iron. I, yeah, no. Well, not do we, we now. do. <laughs> we do, but we don't use it. No. Yeah. Sometimes, if I, if something's really creased, a good hack is hanging it in your bathroom, bathroom turning yeah. the hot water on yeah. really really hot. 
Yeah, I had a green, I had a green satin dress yeah. that I bought, and it came all crinkled up. So I had a shower with it for a couple of weeks, and it steamed it right out. Oh, perfect. <laughs> I feel like I have to keep saying, like, for the record, I do love my parents, but <laughs> I also love not living with them. Yeah, independence, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, space, freedom. It's yeah. it's it is literally. I don't think I could ever go living back home. No, absolutely nowhere, nowhere. No. I like my own rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> So if you could tell our listeners a little bit about your buying process individually when you were buying your first home. Yeah, so I was kept updated um, regularly by the sales executive um, and that was when kind of key milestones, so that could be um, the building was fully kind of the house was fully built uh, the roof was put on and um, but also invited to have a look at the house and um, which was kind of a real um kind of happy memory of mine looking at it when the, when the roof was on when the doors and windows were fitted um, and then one of my kind of greatest memories as well was going into the sales office and choosing um the kitchen that's the kitchen units worktops um tiles you know i remember as, as a first time buyer it was a very very exciting um, yeah. kind of phase uh, so working full time it is hard to get out to the estate um and and, and have a look at the build progress it was yeah. nice that the sales executive sent me pictures um you know of, of the progress and they kind of really communicate with us on a on a weekly basis and for me it was it was slightly different because i i didn't drive um and i was living in york at the time right. so i couldn't get through to for, to see the regular updates like your doors have gone in like i want to see that so um i had i had them on whatsapp Right. Um, and they used to then WhatsApp me pictures with the updates in Aww. capital letters, updates for today, <laughs> and then they date it. Um, so like the doors are in, the windows are in, and yeah. it's it's really exciting because when you put your deposit down, you're just putting a deposit on a bit of land, and it's quite scary, especially when you're young, yeah. like right and buying a house, and then you show everybody, and it's like it's just a bit of land. Yeah. But then the the process and and how quick it goes from just being a bit of land to then your foundations are laid yeah. and then the roof's finally on yeah it's it was, such a surreal feeling very isn't it? very yeah. yeah yeah and it's it's incredible to see how much workmanship goes into it to yeah. get it to that point as well yeah and when you cook when you come and see it and there's like a flurry of men in hard hats everywhere <laughs> yeah it's a lot yeah. of work goes into it yeah I, th- I think one thing i was surprised about with gleason was that every home has a drive or a garage and a front and back garden because actually yeah. when I, when we look around other developers that's not something that oh that's something that I noticed yeah. um you know and I think that's one thing that definitely stood out to me when the house was fully built and I saw the size of the driveway for two cars and the garage yeah. and then a front and rear garden I think it's very very at least a very um generous um, with the space yeah. that they left in terms of then to personalize it yourself with the gardens as well definitely. that's something I definitely remember as a, a fond memory I think especially kind of over lockdown outdoor space is just more valuable to, yeah. to people now and they appreciate it a lot more when yeah. we lived in when I lived in uh, my other house uh, during lockdown so obviously I'm ginger so I'm, I'm a little bit allergic to the sun <laughs> or it doesn't like me um, and we had I had quite a large uh, front garden so I was like what can I do that ain't gonna cost a lot so I dug up the front of it and stuck some flowers in took seven hours and I came back in and I literally was the definition of a squashy um, <laughs> but because I had so much garden that I had to do something with it so I spent all of my day out there and then the sun just decided to be like nope yeah <laughs> not I remember, again I remember for me um in lockdown with the rear garden I had uh, at the Fergus it was a a lovely plot and yeah. it meant that I could we you know we, we finished the decking um, and then obviously it was nice just to sit down there during lockdown with the fire pit yeah. and you know for, and the, with lockdown you know the you're absolutely right with outside space it became invaluable yeah. in the space of kind of overnight and I think that's definitely something that we both took advantage in both our properties yeah. very very decent garden sizes as well especially like because you think if you if you have more bedrooms you're going to get bigger garden space but actually I'd say that my garden space rivaled Josh's garden space and he had an <laughs> extra bedroom and a garage yeah I feel like when you both met was there any kind of like rivalry rivalry with like houses so yeah I wanted his bedroom and his 100%, garage 100 percent yeah 100 percent. The, gar- the, gar- the garage above the bedroom was an absolute no, the bedroom for me. above the garage oh, the bedroom above the garage was an absolute <laughs> <laughs> the bedroom above the garage was an absolute seller for me and I think yeah <laughs> just oh. get a car in the lift <laughs> <laughs> thanks for that thanks for that yeah I wanted his uh I wanted his bedroom, bedroom above the, the garage. garage um his garage as well um and I'd say his kitchen just because um, he had the money to get the optional upgrades. Um, <laughs> so he had them and it made it just look a little bit cleaner, a little bit shinier. Yeah. So yeah, I was jealous of his kitchen cupboards. Aww. I think the nice thing you had though is the you had the you know the patio doors as well mm-hmm. onto the back garden, which is always a yeah. nice feature I think in any in, in, in any kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. 
but he didn't have them. <laughs> Can you describe to our listeners a little bit about your um, interior style from your first homes? What kind of Go vibe on, were you going for? Go on. I'm intrigued. <laughs> Very masculine, white, black, grey. <laughs> so my my styling um, was very much white walls, um, <laughs> black furniture. You thought I was lying. And, <laughs> and grey, grey light fittings. Grey accessories. And, um, that's nice. my, for me. Um, but yours was a lot. Yeah, yours Mine was a lot. is, I always use three words, and they're the three words that um, I've brought to this place as well, is rustic, cosy, but neutral. Um, so I like yeah. very... I like greens, but I don't like, you know, like your sagey greens, but like more of like a pastel nuted kind yeah. of green, very planty, um, <laughs> bring the outside inside. Yeah. Yeah, that made sense. Yeah, outside inside, a little bit of rustic, a little bit of, sometimes a little bit of mi- mix match. Yeah. yeah, sometimes a little bit of mix match. I feel that. It looks, I feel like that's literally what you're describing in your kitchen yeah. right now. Yeah. Rustic, cosy, but neutral. neutral. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm guessing when you've, when you've bought your second home, that's kind of, your rustic, cosy but neutral vibe has spread through. Yeah, so I get so to the be white, in the charge. White, the white walls were my idea. Because um, <laughs> it's white walls, yeah. <laughs> and I get to be in charge of everything else, come interior design, and yeah. then Josh will uh, get to do the garden when, when it gets around to that time. Yeah. Lovely. Well, I think let's put a pause because in our next episode, we are going to be talking to you guys a lot more in detail about your home that we are currently recording in together. So we'll be touching on a bit more about your interior, about your journey, and potentially any upcoming plans. But let's keep that one secret. (laughs) (laughs) So join us next week where we'll be back with Josh and Tanya talking about how they met on their development, the rest of their amazing story together, and buying their second Gleason home on Rainsborough Park. Don't forget to subscribe to our Spotify channel so you don't miss a future episode. See you next week.